Hello, hello, hello. Today we're going to take a quick look at The Great Wall, directed by Yimou Zhang and starring Matt Damon and Jing Tian. A group of mercenaries have come to China to search for black powder. Unfortunately, the journey has not been an easy one, as they are constantly pursued by bandits, and one night they even have to deal with this mysterious monster. They started their journey with 20 men, and by the time they reach the Great Wall, there are two left. William Guerin, played by Matt Damon, and his sidekick Pero Tovar, played by Pedro Pascal. They soon learn the people guarding the wall are part of a group called the Nameless Order, and they are not, in fact, there to keep the Mongols out of China, as you might expect. They are up against a vicious horde of monsters called the Tao Te, who have been attacking the wall every 60 years or so, ever since a huge green meteor crashed into a nearby mountain about 2,000 years ago. And then it gets weird. So this movie ended up being released on my birthday, at least in this country, and not exactly the birthday present I was hoping for. I didn't really know what to expect from this one. My initial reaction to the trailer was, oh goody, another one of these movies where the foreigners are saved by the Great White Hope, because we needed another one of those in 2017. How is this still a thing? However, much to my surprise, that's not really what this movie is. In some ways, it kind of fits that trope, but in other ways, it totally subverts it. Matt Damon plays a character of unspecified European origin, with an unspecified European accent to go with it. It's, it's really weird. It's kind of Irish, but not exactly. It's Irish-ish, with maybe a hint of Swedish? Sweet Irish? I, I don't know. And according to Mr. Damon himself, that was actually the plan. They wanted it to sound recognizable, but not exactly like anything that you would hear in the modern world since this movie takes place about a thousand years ago. So it's kind of like After Earth in reverse. But fortunately, this is nowhere near as bad as After Earth. And yes, this white dude does assist the Chinese in stopping this alien monster menace, but he does not do so by showing his European superiority. There's not much superior about the character, really. He starts out as a mercenary, and he's not a very good guy. He's a greedy bastard. And the Chinese soldiers at this wall are the ones who are really shown to be superior, and in fact, they end up showing him the way to redemption. He is shown to be quite skilled with a bow and arrow, almost comically so, so he has that going for him, but even with that, he is still in awe over what the Nameless Order are capable of. The Order is divided into five groups, all of which are brightly color-coded, because in case you haven't figured it out yet, this movie is a little bit silly. It is totally a B-movie, although it does have a budget. You have one group that does melee fighting, one group on horseback, one group of archers, one group handles all the siege weapons, and then you have the blue group. The blue group is made up almost entirely of women, and led by a woman, Commander Lin Mei, played by Jing Tian, and she is awesome. I cannot say enough good things about this character or this actress. She was phenomenal and really makes a great action star, and I left the theater really hoping I would see more of her in the future. Then I looked her up and found out she's going to be in Kong Skull Island, which is coming out pretty soon, and Pacific Rim 2. This makes me happy. But anyway, this is what the Blue Group does. Their job is to basically stand up on the edge of the wall and strap these bungee cords to them, and they take this spear, and they dive headfirst off the wall, and as they get to the bottom, stab one of the monsters, and they get hauled back up, hopefully, and once they get back up there, they grab a fresh spear, rinse and repeat. That's their job. It is the silliest and most impractical thing, but I will be damned if it does not look badass. There is a moment where they kind of casually suggest that the reason the team is made up mostly of women is because they tend to weigh less and thus they're easier to pull up after each dive, but I suspect that's just a convenient excuse so the men don't have to do it. I wouldn't want to do it either. There's a moment where Commander Lin gives William the opportunity to try it out, and not even when there's any fighting going on, it's when there's a lull in the battle, so it's completely clear, it's just, you know, a test run, and he actually straps on the bungee cord, stands over on the edge, and then he's like... Nope. 
no, I'm not doing it. You, you guys, much respect, but no, fuck that. And I can't blame him. I wouldn't do it either. If they brought me up to that wall and said, okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to strap this bungee cord to your ass, and we're going to give you a spear, and you got to dive head first. Stay with me now. Stay with me. You got to dive head first and try to stabby stabby as many monsters as you can before we pull you back up and hope to God you don't get eaten before you make it back up here. And then we're going to give you another spear and you're going to keep doing it. Um, can I be an archer instead of... Uh, I mean, I've never actually used a bow and arrow, but I, I can learn. Because, yeah, I'm not doing that. No. No, no, not happening. No. Visually, this movie looks amazing, although I didn't really care for the design of some of the monsters. Not that the CG was bad or anything. It looked fine. It's just the way it was designed seemed a little too weird, like they were trying a bit too hard to make him look alien. That's, that's just how I saw it, but I freely admit this is purely subjective. You may like him more than I did. The action sequences are shot incredibly well and they are a ton of fun to watch. The story, it's pretty silly. Uh, if you didn't get that idea already, yeah, it's a very silly, but I had a lot of fun with it. It was co-written by Max Brooks, who wrote World War Z, so... That should give you some idea of what to expect. Matt Damon's performance was pretty good, ambiguous accent aside. Uh, Pascal made for a pretty good sidekick. Willem Dafoe has a small part in this as well, and once again, he's playing a scheming villain, a part he plays quite well. And again, Jing Tian, awesome. And in the end, I ended up having a lot of fun with this, far more than I expected. It's stupid as hell, I freely admit that, but it's my kind of stupid. And if it sounds like it might be your kind of stupid, I would recommend checking it out. It's at least worth a matinee. And that's about all I got to say about The Great Wall. Till next time, take care.